Before we get started today, I thought it would be a good place to just set the stage on the larger world of the Mediterranean. We're going to be starting our story around 170, 175 before Common Era. And if you were with me on our last episode, of course, we were talking about the world of Judea and uh, the surrounding lands in Jerusalem around 160 BCE. And kind of what was the immediate world like after or during kind of the height of the Maccabee Revolt. The world of the Mediterranean around 180 BCE is... Um, The Seleucids are a major but weakening power. Rome is an ascendant power. Rome has just kind of wrapped up the third and final Punic War against Carthage. Rome is an ascendant power in amongst the Mediterranean, expanding their influence through the late kind of mid-Roman Republic era, Caesar and Pompey and the Triumvirate are still a ways away. The slave revolt of Spartacus that a lot of us are familiar with from popular culture is still a ways away, still distant into the future. However, Rome is a dominant controlling force and expanding into northern Italy. They're expanding into the areas that were previously controlled by Carthage. They are expanding into um, Greece and Anatolia. And they have just concluded a war against the Seleucids. This was formally ended in the Treaty of Apamea, which forced the Seleucids to abandon roughly half of Anatolia and whatever possessions and influence they had in Greece to the Romans. It also forced the Seleucids to give up a royal hostage, which was in fact the heir to the Seleucid throne. This allowed Antiochus IV, who shouldn't necessarily have been king of the Seleucid Empire, to seize control and become the king of the Seleucid Empire. Now, Antiochus, not able through the terms of the treaty to expand his empire in in Anatolia and retake the lands he succeed pardon me he ceded to Rome he instead rebuilds the army and attacks the Ptolemies in Egypt and he's successful in taking several lands Judea being one of them the city of Jerusalem and the lands south of that But he is defeated by the Ptolemies, kind of at the tipping point in a critical battle. And so Antiochus, and this is Antiochus IV, who's become ruler of the Seleucid Empire just a few years after this Treaty of Apame has been signed with Rome. He is now the king of former lands that he's controlled, looking at lands in Anatolia that his uh, former brother, who was the former ruler of the Seleucid Empire, lost. Short on cash. And what do you do if you're a ruler who's short on cash, wanting to build armies, your, your nation's kind of built on battle this is your identity you're really from the lands that you have conquered you want taxes you want to be able to raise armies slaves you want 
um, the produce and goods produced in these lands, and Antiochus is getting all of this, but he's not getting what he should be getting out of Jerusalem and Judea, the surrounding lands that are surrounding Jerusalem. 